Hi everyone, and welcome to the Walters Workshop. Today on the workbench is a park-used Disneyland prop that might look familiar to fans of the Jungle Cruise. The owner of this prop recently won it in an online auction, and since I'm not too far from the auction house, he had me go take a look at it to see if it could be cleaned and conditioned before sending it back to him. With a closer inspection, I was able to see that this prop was really just covered in a thick layer of pond scum that had probably accumulated due to its many years in the waters of the Jungle Cruise. I'll be using solvent-free methods to remove the dried pond scum, because keeping the original paint and patina was very important to this owner. Also, to keep this as original as possible, I won't be doing any restoration work, meaning that I won't be adding any paint or resin to areas if I find that they're missing. To start things off, I'll be removing the two bolts that hold the fish to this metal pipe. I'm only spraying them down with some distilled water to break down that layer of pond scum to make removing them easier. This metal pipe would have held the fish to a rotating drum that was powered by air pressure, and as your boat passed, it made it look like the fish were attacking. The nuts and bolts are easily removed with a few turns from a wrench and an allen key. i found with a lot of these Disneyland props that they're never permanently attached to their bases. They often come apart pretty easily to make maintenance a lot easier down the road. Here I'm just adding the small bolt to a cup so that way I don't lose these small parts as I'm working before moving on to the second bolt. With the pipe removed, it's easier to get a look at that metal plate that holds the fish to the pipe. The front's still pretty gunked up, but the back area where the two pieces of metal were touching is really not that bad. I need to soften up all this dried pond scum before I can start removing it. To do that, I'm going to be using this moistened paper towel. The towel's been soaked in some distilled water, and once the pond scum has had a chance to absorb some of that water, it'll make it a lot easier to remove. And to do that removal, I'm going to be using a soft bristle toothbrush. Don't worry, it's not my personal toothbrush, although I do like purple. A soft bristle toothbrush is actually ideal for this kind of cleaning. And if you think about it, it has to be strong enough to clean the plaque off of your teeth, but gentle enough not to harm them. For the piranha, I'm starting very slow, just brushing in a few small areas and then inspecting to make sure that it's not removing anything that I'm not intending to remove. I give it a few strokes with a toothbrush and then look at it very closely under harsh lighting. Again, just making sure that I'm only removing pond scum here. And you can see just how slow and methodical I'm being. At this point, I'm not sure how the material is going to react to being cleaned, so I'm taking it nice and slow. In between brushing, I'm rinsing off the toothbrush in a bowl of distilled water that I have sitting off camera. And that bowl is getting pretty dirty pretty quick. And at this point, I have a good idea of what the fish is made out of, so I can be a little bit more aggressive in my cleaning. But then my family stopped by to see how things were going, and I left that interaction in this video because I think it's a good explanation. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. Really? It's really cool looking. Yeah. Super grody. Yeah, it is. The orange, though, it looks like what they did was they probably painted a strip of orange in the mold first, mm -hmm. and then they put the uh, like a layer of clear, and then they did the layer of the glitter, Isn't and then they metal? did more. Uh, this feels like fiberglass. Okay. I meant to say fiberglass resin, which is a very hard material. It's super durable. Fiberglass. So I that is with... very durable. This is basically a boat, like what you would do to make a boat. That's good, very bright glitter. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that quite as much. Yeah. Mm hmm Gotta get those choppers clean. Arr, 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 arr. Now with the family visit over, I can get back into a groove with my cleaning. Now that I know that material can handle a little bit more aggressive brushing, I concentrate my efforts in the sections that I think have the thickest amount of pond scum. Occasionally, I'll take a moment to wipe things down with a paper towel before getting back to brushing and then wiping again. And that's kind of how things go for a while until I think I'm ready to move on to the next side. And with this side, I'm pretty much doing the same thing that I did on the other side. And I'm still going slow and methodical, cleaning one section pretty well before moving on to another. That way I can keep track of what I've already done and not have to work over the same area too many times. It can actually be a little tricky to figure out what is the gunk and what is the fish. So to make things a little easier, I'm going to bring in a special tool. 
Using a black light is nice because you might see some areas that might be otherwise hidden under natural light. And in this case, the orange that's painted into the fish has a fluorescent quality to it, but the pond scum that's on top of it remains like a dark area, so I can see that those sections still need a little bit more cleaning. I can also see that there's still some pond scum left around the belly area and around the gills and the eye. So I'm going to take that back under natural light and do a little bit more scrubbing, just making sure that it's all off and very clean before I move on to any other steps. And here I moved on from using the soft bristle brush to using a soft cleaning sponge. This kind of sponge is great for removing dirt and grime, but you have to be very gentle with it. You don't want to overuse this kind of thing and end up removing more material than you needed. I continually move the fish around to make sure that I'm catching every angle. Once I have that done, I give it a good wipe down before moving on to the most sensitive tool that I have in my toolbox, and that is my own fingers. What I'm feeling for is a change in texture. If there are areas that feel rough or slimy to my finger compared to the smooth surface of the fish, I know that that's areas of pond scum that still need to be removed. To get rid of the harder sections of surface grime, I've turned to one of my more specialized tools. This is just a popsicle stick that I've broken in half. The soft wood is able to remove the thicker areas of grime, but it's soft enough that it won't leave any scratches in the material that's underneath. I'm using the edge of the popsicle stick and working my way around the fish, trying to get the grime out of all the deep areas and crevices, like around the eyes and the mouth. There were a few sections that had a particularly thick amount of grime. In those sections, I'm just taking my time with the popsicle stick. It might look like I'm being aggressive in my removal, but keep in mind the wood is a lot softer than the resin that the fish is made out of. One more wipe down, and the cleaning part of this process was complete, and it was time to move on to adding a protective wax layer to the fish. Carnuba wax is a gentle protectant that's ideal for cars, boats, and Jungle Cruise piranhas. I use a small amount of wax on the provided sponge and apply it to the fish in an even layer. Again, I'm working in sections to make sure no areas of the fish are missed while I'm applying the wax. This particular kind of wax dries to a soft haze, and then you can go back over those areas with a soft cloth to shine them up. Here I'm using a microfiber cloth and buffing all the areas that I have applied wax to. I wouldn't be using wax if this prop had any paint on it. If that were the case, I'd have to use a different kind of sealer, since waxes can break down the acrylic and oil paints. I apply two layers of the carnuba wax, buffing in between to really bring out the shine. Now that my work on the fish is complete, I turn to the metal sections. I'm using a detergent that's specifically designed for metal. It neutralizes the rust and preps the surface for sealing or painting. I'll do this to both sides of the plate, as well as the connecting pipe, before applying a layer of metal protectant. The metal really didn't have any rust or corrosion, but this will help to keep it in good condition while it's on display. And once the pipe is fitted back on, the work is finished. The before and after of this cleaning is particularly striking, just due to the amount of guck and grime that had accumulated on this prop over the years. And all that dried pond scum gave the surface a matte gray appearance, which is not how it's intended to look on the attraction. And in fact, the Jungle Cruise ride will occasionally close for refurbishment, so they can do the same kind of cleaning, only on a larger scale. Now with the pond scum removed from this prop, you can see the bright oranges and metallic glitters that were used in its construction. There's still some signs of wear and age on this prop, but the owner wanted to showcase those, visually displaying the life that it had in the rivers of the Jungle Cruise. Rare park used props like this can often go for a premium when sold at auction, and this item is no different. The owner of this prop had done their research and knew what it should look like underneath all that dried pond scum. With some gentle cleaning and responsible conservation, I was able to reveal all the original detail of this prop. And I can tell you, I certainly wouldn't want to be in the water with this guy around. Well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like it. And I'll see you next time in the Walters Workshop. With the sound recording, if you did that, that you can make an ASMR video. People would like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs>